How do you want a fortune cookie? Mm, yes. It's always good to start your day with a fortune, with good fortune. That someone special loves to see the light in your eyes in bed. <laughs> <laughs> see, now your day's off to a good start. Mm -hmm. And you can continue with, uh, yeah, that fun stuff. boat, which is 24-7 nowadays, we feel so close yet so far away from civilization. And by that, I mean we can be moored near one of the largest tech capitals in the world, yet we struggle to get a good enough cell signal to avoid dropped calls or to take full advantage of our hotspot to work remotely. Now, more than ever, we're determined to be more connected aboard Freedom so we can easily take our work lives with us wherever we go. What you looking up, Sean? What, what are you doing on a Sunday uh, morning? I'm gonna buy a circuit breaker to add to our electrical panel for our cell phone booster. We don't have an SSB radio on our boat, so I'm gonna yeah. remove that breaker and put a new one in. The reason I'm not gonna reuse it is it's super high amperage, it's 20 amps, which wouldn't protect the cell phone booster. I'll probably buy like a two to five amp breaker to replace the 20 amp. Hmm, is this expensive? Uh, 13 bucks. Oh, hey, that's in budget. <laughs> Check. <laughs> um, you can consider that an approved purchase. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So this is actually uh, my normal occurrence for us on a Sunday morning. Sean wakes up, literally, we rolled out of bed like 20 minutes ago, and he starts working. I personally prefer to slowly rise, make some coffee, have a little breakfast, but other people can't seem to do that. What's up? Oh, it's just letting everybody know what our morning routine is. Yeah. You roll out of bed and start working. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a long list, you gotta keep chipping away at it. Yeah. Early to bed, early to rise. That's Those right. who start work ASAP are healthy, wealthy, and wise. This helps to have long legs. I am putting up a cell phone boosting antenna. Unfortunately, this antenna comes with male threads and all of the flange mount posts that you buy have male threads on them as well. So I need a coupling tube that has female threads in it. The one that they send has a big hole on the side of it and it's meant to go on one of these like VHF style mounts and the hole is so that the cable can exit and go into a cable grommet. I want to feed the cable that plugs into the bottom of this straight through the tube so I don't have a wire going external of this flange mount base. This isn't going to work long term because this will allow water to get in, but this week I'm going to go to fisheries and they do make a solid tube that doesn't have a hole in the side of it, so I'll replace this with the solid tube, but for now just to mock it up, I'll put it together with this tube and then I can take it out and replace it. I'm going to fish the cable through and then I'm going to screw these two pieces together and then that'll be our cell boosting antenna. through all the cable that I don't need on the top side and then ultimately this cable will come down this pillar I'm going to take this cover off it's going to come down the pillar it's going to go through the lower section of the helm and I think I'm going to mount the cell phone booster um, underneath the underneath the wheel there's a, a, a back bulkhead where there's a lot of other electronics mounted so that's probably where I'll mount the booster but for now let's finish putting the antenna on cool Hey, How's it going down there? there you are. Okay, I'm down here. I'm in my station, I think. All right, if you want to hand me up a coffee and a sandwich. <laughs> like, really? No. Okay. So, the white cable that we 
started down there. That's yeah. the one that you'll pull on. So you can pull straight okay. and I'll tell you when to stop. Yeah. some tension on that cable so I want to make sure that when I thread it in that it's not under a bunch of twisted tension. So I'm going to keep spinning it to the left and I'm just feeling the cable right now starting to, to roll and that, that's fine. That just means that when we thread it in now it's going to unwind the cable and it'll be in a relaxed state. That's what it's doing. Voila. Bob's your uncle. There's the exterior part of the antenna. Oh, it looks so this, sharp. This receives the cell phone signal that you have, and then this cable plugs into a booster that amplifies that signal and then increases it and re replicates it within the boat. Are you, how confident are you that this is going to really work for us when we're at a really remote anchorage instead of so close to the city right now? The only real confident solution is satellite data, but that's so ridiculously expensive. What did I say the solution was? The solution isn't that, uh, that what was it? <laughs> You don't remember? It was such a great solution, yeah. come on. The whole reason that we're doing this is so that we make it easier to work when, you know, we're at anchor. The better solution is we just get rid of work and then that alleviates the problem. And exactly. You don't data when you're at anchor, so. We'll go with that. If the, When this doesn't work, we'll go with that. Yeah, then that'll be a sign from the universe that <laughs> this whole work thing is just not working out. <laughs> You know what this reminds me of? What's that? Have you seen the movie Poltergeist? No. You haven't? No. <laughs> okay, the other thing I'm gonna do is these black wires were from this previous antenna. I don't wanna keep a bunch of unused extra stuff in here, so I'm gonna pull these out. They also go down here and they're bundled up below. The bundle of these old wires is behind this satellite box, so I'm going to pull the satellite box forward so I can get at that bundle of wires. And by the way, this satellite box is for satellite telephone and data. It would work for internet, although very, very slow and very, very expensive. To give you an idea of how expensive, it goes down a little bit with the plan that you buy. 10 megabytes of data. Keep in mind, 10 megabytes is maybe like three pictures that you would take from an iPhone. I think it was like 80 bucks for 10 megabytes. You know, if you want to freely use data aboard a boat like you would at home over satellite, you're probably looking at, I don't know, three to 5,000 bucks a month wow. for a data plan. If somebody has something that's much more expensive that's unlimited in satellite, please let us know. You mean less expensive? Yeah. <laughs> Did I say more expensive? Yeah. yeah. Um, I was just looking at our budget spreadsheet the other day, and that's definitely not in there. No. No. And then, uh, if you can make me a fresh cup of coffee. You ready? Keep the project going. Mmm. You know I'm good for that. Yeah. Yeah. 
group. Looks like I can screw this base in with a couple of flathead screws, and then this will just snap into place. I also have Velcro, but we're not gonna use Velcro. I think we'll screw it. If I can find a good spot to screw it. So this is the antenna that goes on the inside of the boat. So the way that this the way that this works is we got our exterior antenna that we put on the roof. All right, that's coming through this white wire. And that's getting plugged into one side of the amplifier. And the amplifier is boosting and replicating the cell signal inside the boat. And that's being transmitted um, from this internal antenna that plugs into the bottom of this. And then there's power. Any of the devices that want that cellular boost need to be within like 18 to 36 inches of this internal antenna. Isn't that crazy? I okay. thought it would be feet, like much longer. Yeah, I did too. And there may be other antennas that will make that feel bigger, but I think if we put it in the pilot house, that's where our router will always be. Yeah. So. What about behind the PC? That's kind of what, it, that's what I was thinking. That's always where your phone is and where put the router back, is. Put it back here somewhere. As far to the port side. Yeah, they say you want it to be like eight, at least 18 inches away. I might go on the underside of the cabinet. I think that might give us a good sort of radius so that <clears throat> phones will get a boost if you're seated at the helm chair or the pilot house bench and then the router usually sits up here as well. Mm -hmm. And this just attaches with adhesive so we can always move it if, uh, if, if we don't like the location. second man cave back here I could uh, if I crawled back far enough I could get my whole body in here and you could close the doors Installing is a is the WeBoost, so it's made for a, a vehicle, made for a car. Um, so there's a couple things you need to do uh, to change it when you're installing it in a boat. One thing is the antenna that comes with it for external use. I'll show you that. It comes with a magnetic car antenna. The magnetic car antenna actually requires the metallic roof of your car to sort of reflect signal into this antenna. So this antenna doesn't work for a boat. So that's why we installed the, the big omnidirectional Wilson antenna up on the roof. Um, so that's one item that comes with the kit that you won't use when installing it with a boat. But since it's for a vehicle, the power supply is a cigarette lighter plug. So it uses 12 volts, but then there's a small step down uh, DC to DC transformer built in line. And the plug that plugs into the WeBoost is uh, five volts. So it's converting from 12 volts down to five volts. What we're gonna end up doing is cutting off the cigarette lighter plug, and then we're gonna wire this into our 12 volt DC panel. And it uses about four and a half amps of five volts. So that means on the 12 volt side, you know, it's probably gonna use about two to three amps. So we'll end up uh, getting probably a three or five amp circuit breaker, and we're gonna replace the circuit breaker for an SSB radio. We don't have an SSB radio installed on our boat. Um, so for now, we're gonna use that slot. And right now there's a 20 amp circuit breaker in there. So that wouldn't provide adequate protection for this. So we're gonna lower that to uh, probably a five amp circuit breaker. And that way, uh, not only do we have circuit protection, but having it on a switch gives us the ability to turn it off when we're not using it. Or when, or when we're in areas where the cell strength is good and we don't need the booster. Girls have all the fun. <laughs> Looks good. One bar? Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Mm. Wow, you got four bars from one. 
So. I'd say it works. Yeah. yeah. I will tell. I'm gonna put this mess back together. Although the jury is still out on the overall effectiveness of our Wii Boost, so far we're seeing an improvement in our cellular coverage and our ability to use our hotspot in more remote locations. We'll probably be testing out more technology solutions in the coming months, so head over to our Instagram page for more updates. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell so you don't miss out on future updates and adventures aboard Freedom. See you next time. Mm -hmm.